Welcome. In this module, we'll take a look at the second layer of the cybersecurity maturity matrix, which is called fundamentals. Let's take a look. Now, as we have discussed, the cybersecurity maturity matrix is a proactive, structured, sequential framework so that security can be categorized and can be implemented in a consistent manner. And we're going to take a look at layer two, which is called fundamentals. Now, these are the controls which are present in layer two as part of fundamentals. Licensed or open source vulnerability management tool, a minimum quarterly credential-based vulnerability management cycle, edge next generation firewall with web, email, and anti-malware filtering, network segmentation with VLANs by department service and DMZ. So let's take a look at the first control. 2.1, licensed or open source vulnerability management tool. Now we've already done the fundamental steps in layer one, and the first control in layer two is that now you need a vulnerability management tool in the organization which can be open source like OpenVAS. You don't have to spend any money at all. It works quite fine. Or you can buy a good uh, 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 licensed uh, vulnerability management tool. And an excellent one is Qualys, uh, which runs from the cloud and uh, very little administration work that you have to do. So vulnerability management or patch management is a foundational layer of security practice. It's the very, very first step and the open source, uh, like, I said, like I mentioned, you can use OpenVAS. For license, you can use Qualys. And the organization needs to own uh, its, its and run. It needs to possess a vulnerability scanner so that the vulnerability scanning activity can be initiated and can be done regularly. The second one is minimum quarterly credential-based vulnerability management cycle. So what we're now saying is, that the vulnerability management needs to be conducted. First, you need to own a scanner. You need to possess a scanner. Your team needs to be trained on the scanner. And now you should start off the vulnerability management journey by conducting a quarterly vulnerability management cycle. So for those organizations that have not conducted vulnerability management practice before, the good place to start is that they should run the cycle every three months initially. And as we go to higher layers, this will go to monthly. And the international best practice, by the way, is that the weekly scan should be run. So that if your organization is, uh, is, uh, has been doing this for some time, then you should try to move uh, to monthly and then weekly uh, vulnerability management cycle. The next control is edge next generation firewall with web, email, and anti-malware filtering. So in the previous layer, we, were, we had talked about a simple version of the uh, uh, next generation firewall. And by the way, there is an open source version of next generation firewall as well, which is completely free of cost and it's called PFSense. You can use that or you can have a commercial grade, um, uh, you know, next generation firewall. For example, 14Net is a world class next generation firewall. They're also quite cost effective and it's really excellent. It's right at the top of Gartner. So the typical next generation firewall is 14Net which uh, has been in the top uh, section as a winner of the uh, Gartner Magic Quadrant uh, for the last several years. And the features which it offers are, you know, it'll give you VPNs and remote encrypted access, web filtering, email anti-spam filtering, antivirus uh, controls at the network layer, um, anti-malware application visibility and control, and all the access lists and policy enforcement. So now we're talking about having a next generation firewall at the perimeter, and not just a simple one, but a next generation firewall, which performs all these functions. And then the fourth control is network segmentation, which is logical separation of the uh, network with VLANs by department service and DMZ. So the network segmentation helps create separate broadcast domains and helps to manage the traffic better. So if there's an impact on, uh, on the network, it'll stay within the VLAN and it'll not impact the rest of the VLANs. So it's a great idea uh, and, a, and, a, and an international best practice to segment the network, not only by department, but also by service. For example, video and data um, or administration traffic should all be separated in different VLANs. Data center usually has different VLANs in it as well um, to separate different types of servers. And then you can implement different security policies because you have uh, set up a different, uh, different VLAN which is uh, which which 
allows you to control that VLAN with a different set of policies. So you can separate the policies and filtering for each separate VLAN. This helps you to manage the traffic and segregates the traffic into traffic types as well. And you know that all your voice traffic, for example, is passing through this VLAN. And then if you want to perform queuing or, uh, or quality of service, it's easier to manage that particular service with, uh, uh, with, with a QoS mechanism, for example. That's all that we have for this module. Thank you.